Greetings. Welcome back to Black Bear News, where we are discussing climate change, abrupt climate change, and things adjacent. It's been a little while since we covered Extinction Rebellion. Uh, not for lack of news, just uh, for a, not for a dearth of news, but for a deluge of news about climate change. It's hard to cover it all, but um, so recently Extinction Rebellion protested Fashion Week uh, in London this, this last week. It's another industry that obviously contributes to climate change. Just the making of textiles alone is an extremely destructive process, uh, but I'm dubious about the effectiveness of targeting single industries for their practices of pollution. Not to say that uh, I don't think that Extinction Rebellion's uh, practices are, are wrong or futile. Uh, you have to do what you can. You have to draw attention to the places that you can. Um, but when you single out, you know, when you single a, a a particular industry or um, a certain sector of society, uh, it's very difficult because everything's interconnected, right? Um, since the production itself relies on yet another, yet other polluting industries to supply materials and distribute end product, um, all, all industries rely on other industries and other, other things that contribute to climate change in order to function. It's a web, all of it, hence the name industrial civilization, the entire apparatus, and by extension ourselves, are connected to this giant monster that continues to grind us, and more importantly, the planet down each day. It's a huge, slow, and fast-moving monster that seems unstoppable by a few puny hu humans interested in telling people about the problem of how they conduct, th conduct themselves in the world. The hopelessness that I have to avoid in my own conducting of daily business, I literally have to buy into the game every day in order to function, lest I sit motionless in awe and overwhelming depression about what we do daily to contribute to the destruction. So we few puny humans protest, make videos, get on Twitter, get off Twitter, talk to our friends and family, stop talking to our friends and family, go to protests, make sings, uh, make sings, make songs, make art and carry on trying to extract ourselves where we can from our contributions to this mistake. But what does a sustainable fashion industry look like? If we truly broke it down, it would be completely local and personal, meaning at the heart of it, the fashion industry needs to go away. And people who care about what they wear more than others, some could give a shit, uh, need to do so on their own time. Let's, let's watch some video from this, uh, this protest here. I'm gonna find it in a second. Are against fast fashion. Raise your hand now, please. Extinction Rebellion were out in force on Saturday. Hundreds of climate change activists targeted London Fashion Week, blocking roads leading to the event's main hub armed with colorful flares, banners, and flags as they called on the fashion industry to act. Rebellion! Rebellion! Extinction Rebellion spokesperson Sarah Arnold. Uh, we are asking for deep systemic change. We're asking not for sustainability, but a complete reinvention of this industry in a way that regenerates the environment. Um, and yeah, so we're calling for a cancellation between now and September and for the Br British Fashion Council to gather their stakeholders and come up with an emergency action plan. But importantly, we're also telling them that they cannot do this alone. They need the government. They need to call on the government to act. On Friday, a near nude protester from the animal rights group PETA had her fake skin torn off outside a London Fashion Week venue in a stunt against the leather industry. Ouch. So, there you go. Uh, they're protesting Fashion Week. Uh, it's one tiny sliver of the problem that we could concentrate on. How many other industries could we say this about? Every single one? Pretty much, it's pretty much the answer. So protest if you must, make a show of it, make a spectacle. I'm here for it. But the real protest lies in being completely, a completely different person. To live in this civilization and point out its flaws, 
or reject it outright. Somehow we have to do both. Cheers to those who are doing just this. Uh, I, I always applaud Extinction Rebellion and their efforts. I, I think they're an important part of the future, if you will, of climate awareness. Doing anything that we possibly can to save the planet and save, the, you know, all the beings that live on the planet. Um, even though it may seem like an insurmountable task. So I'm going to finish up by reading a comment. We're going to go to McCorkle's Corner. This is a comment from uh, two days ago. And Marty McCorkle says, pro tip, do not change your planet's climate, despite the temptation uh, to see how unlivable an unlivable planet can get. Just say no to climate change. Changing the climate may have unforeseeable consequences, sort of like using a flat screen television underwater during a swim. One might not guess it, but even in a clean, chlorinated swimming pool, submerging a flat screen makes it operate poorly, then not at all. I speak from experience, but if you must change your climate for whatever reason, whether to continue flights to very important conferences or to have that child who will save the planet that you helped muck up, expect the unexpected, which is hard. Because the unexpected is like that Mongol invading horde rarely having the decency of calling ahead for accommodations. My solution to accelerating ocean currents? Glad you asked. As ocean currents accelerate, slow them down with a large fleet of propellers. Confiscate all of those very large propellers from cargo, battle, research, and other ships, plus Prince Harry's pleasure yacht, and aim their rotating propellers against the accelerating sea current. These contrarian propellers will slow down the sea currents. Then there's nothing left to do but, but to hang the mission accomplished banner and pop the top on a well-deserved tab cola. Funny? Oh, sure. Laugh it up, my brilliant solution. Uh, at my brilliant solution again, yet when grasping for straws and solving global warming, heat reflecting aerosols or even space mirrors are endlessly suggested as solutions. Instead... Uh, of the only solution, stop emitting carbon. Aerosol heat reflection in space mirrors ought to cause laughing, followed by coughing from laughing way too hard, follow, followed by even more laughing because these solutions are as silly and insane as my brilliant p propeller ocean current solution, and we keep emitting carbon. Though industrial civilization is a mean, practical joke, very few of its inmates are in on the gag. Most everyone is on the receiving end of this plant planet's chair pull trick and will hit the ground sitting when climate change wakes from its club nap, warms up its hips, and starts its deadly, deadly disco moves. So don't change your planet's climate, whatever you do. Wait, wrong crowd, too late for you. Your climate works are gummed up beyond repair, so take a mo to kiss your soft, firm... Take a moment to kiss your soft, firm peaches, Sayonara, because the unexpected and his brand of merry mess is coming to town to stay, and they'll make the Mongolian horde seem like a visit by the in-laws in comparison. Good luck, everyone. And that is that for today. If you uh, Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so at the links provided below. Also, if you would like to contribute in the last few months to the making of this climate change record, I will provide a link as well to that. You can um, kind of look at the page about what's going on with the record. Thanks so much, and we will see you next time.